Hello beautiful people, what is up? I just had to clap because I got a new mic, so uh, let me know how the sound quality is, but I had to clap to get like the things to match and whatever, and both of the cats jumped and it was funny. I wanted to film my movies and TV shows that I've been watching lately, little reviews. I just filmed a video on my booktube channel that's all about my rating system, and my rating system is really similar for movies and TVs as it is for books. So if you're interested in some like basic ideas of my style for rating, then you should check out that video. But I wanted to talk about some movies and TV shows that I've been watching. So I finished season three of 13 Reasons Why on Netflix. This is going like way back. The most, the last thing that I watched, the, the oldest thing that I've watched since last making a video like this, I was making these videos on my old booktube channel. So, um, 13 Reasons Why. I finished season three and I gave it a four out of five star. I didn't love that they introduced a new character that then narrated everything. So I didn't like that. I wish that we had had a narrator that was already a part of the story instead of somebody new. That really threw me off the entire time. I liked that character once we got to know her. I just didn't like that she was like the center of the rest of the story and I did have to suspend my disbelief quite a bit for this season. I really liked season two a lot and I really liked season one a lot. I think they go from like five stars to four and a half stars to four stars um, and honestly maybe this is more of a three and a half if I'm being honest for this season but this is the season where it starts out with Bryce being murdered and then the whole show is kind of like a mystery of who done it. Yeah, I didn't I didn't love it, but I did still think it was good. It definitely like kept me wanting to watch. It was easy to binge, that type of thing. The next show that I watched was His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman. It was the HBO version series and so I also watched the movie. I didn't watch it recently but I have seen the movie and I've read the books. Even though this series, the TV show, is not 100% following the story of the book, I still really enjoyed it. I gave it a four, maybe even a four and a half out of five stars. I think that it did really well bringing the characters to life. Everyone who's in the books and stuff, they all match really well. Um, the one thing I will say is that Lin-Manuel Miranda does not do a very good southern accent. I love Lin-Manuel Miranda, but that was not his strong suit. It was very distracting. The CGI and everything was good. The writing was good. Um, I really loved the actress who played the villain. I think she did a really amazing job in that character and I had only seen her in the one thing before that. I think she did really good. The overall arching plot really did match well with the Philip Pullman books. I thought it was cool that they did go back and forth between the two parallel universes more than I remember them doing that in either the original movie or the original books. I think that that was a nice touch. I really liked it. I think that we could have gotten a little bit more detail in like what the dude is doing that's going in between the worlds because I felt like we were following along without enough information to care almost and like that being put in the mystery of like what am I watching what's going on I like that but I think it took too long to give us any pieces and so then it left me feeling like why do I even care about this guy and what he's doing. I think it would have been good to add in a little bit more information a little bit sooner on than we actually got. Then we watched The Mandalorian which is the Star Wars show about the character that is the same species, The Mandalorian, as Boba Fett and I didn't love it. I did love Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda was the best thing to exist. I want a Baby Yoda. I really want a little bobblehead Baby Yoda to put in my car. He was cute. I didn't like the story. It was very episodic, so like most of the episodes had a tiny arch within each one. And some of them were good. There's like a heist one that I liked. There was the one where they like help the village. I liked that one too. But I didn't find that there was enough to get me from start to finish of the season. I think that we were lacking a little bit 
However, if you ask Matt about it, then he really liked it, and he's a Star Wars fan, so, like... I don't know, maybe I just am the wrong audience for this for sure, but I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. I didn't even actually finish the season. I stopped after the episode that is the heist episode, which is one of the ones that I did enjoy, but I just didn't care. Like, I didn't care about it at all. We also watched The Witcher on Netflix, which is a show that's based on a book, series, and a game, a video game. And I'm pretty sure the book came first and then the video game came and then now the Netflix TV show. This is also a very episodic show where each episode has a tiny plot. Again, I don't love that version of shows because I feel like it lacks something that makes me want to keep watching in total. There is an arc going for this, but it's just... Ugh. It was okay. I think I gave it a three, three and a half out of five stars. Um, I actually made an entire review video on my booktube channel about this show. Everyone's obsession with it is really like confusing to me. I don't really understand why everyone's obsessed with it. I think there's a lot lacking in this story, but it was cool. The Some of the costuming and some of the special effects and stuff were cool, but I just didn't love it. So that's that. Uh, and I also went to watch The Rise of Skywalker, which was the last movie in the new Star Wars trilogy. And a little bit of background information is that both Matt and I liked the first one of this trilogy. I liked it more than Matt. Matt and I hated the second one. We watched that in theater and both almost left. But we watched the whole thing. We didn't like it. I thought it was boring and weird. And so we both were going into this movie like second guessing or like questioning if we would like it and like maybe we didn't even want to spend the money on it. We were kind of like iffy on it. But we were pleasantly surprised and I think that they did a good job. Who did Rise of Skywalker? What's the director's name? The third J. one? J.J. Abrams. I think that J.J. Abrams did a good job bringing together everything that happened so far. There is like some discussion about like he kind of threw out a lot of the stuff that was put in by the director who did the second movie. Can't remember his name either. I think that he did a good job going like this didn't matter let's get rid of it. I also am disappointed that Finn never got to say whatever he was trying to say. I think he was trying to tell Rey that he was in love with her, but most people say that he was trying to tell her that he has the Force. I don't care what anyone says. I think he was trying to say he was in love with her. And this is also spoilers, so if you don't want spoilers for Star Wars yet, then skip like 30 seconds of the video. I hated that they kissed. I hated it. I knew it was gonna happen. I knew that that was where we were gonna go, but I was still mad about it because I think it's the dumbest thing. I think it's the dumbest thing. I'm so mad and even though I saw it coming, that doesn't make me any less mad. Anyways, I gave this movie a 4 out of 5 stars. 4.5 is what I wrote down, although I think that was being pretty lenient. We also watched Knives Out, which is that movie that's like, it feels very Wes Anderson to me. It's very bright color. It was very visually pleasing. The costuming and the sets and everything was really cool to look at. Um, it was very easy plot. It was not surprising at all where it went. It's a, also kind of a whodunit. The most surprising thing happens early. The, the twist that happens early, that was a nice twist. But then the twist that came later was just okay. This movie had like a lot of famous people in it and I almost feel like they should have spent a little bit more money and time on the writing than on the actors. It was cool to see all of these actors in this film but the writing was a little bit lacking. So I gave it a three and a half out of five stars. Like I said, it was very visually pleasing and the actors, I mean, were good at acting it. I just think like the writing itself, like there wasn't a lot of plot. <laughs> and I watched a classic 
film out of the past, and it was clearly so memorable that I couldn't remember what it was. I had to Google it just now. This movie is about a man who, like, comes into town and gets a job and is, like, living as a, a roommate or a tenant of this couple who's, like, they have a big age gap and, like, they're not very happy, blah, blah, blah. The man falls in love with the wife and then they try to run away, but that doesn't work and they end up murdering the husband and it's all about them trying to get away with it. And it was fine. <laughs> it gave it a three and a half out of five stars as well. I think that it was good for its time. I thought it had a pretty lackluster ending, how it goes about. There's also a deaf character in this film, which I thought was really fun to see. Um, they do use the derogatory term deaf and dumb in the film, but like, it's also made in 1947. Unfortunately, that was the term for deaf back then. Um, so that was like unfortunate to see, but also understandable. But it was really cool that they had a deaf character at all. He's a secondary side character. He's only in a couple scenes, but I thought that was really fun. Then we watched Fight Club, which I have seen before and I've read, and I wanted to watch it again because if you don't know about the film, then there's like this big twist at the end, and it's really interesting to rewatch once you know the secret. So, yeah, Fight Club is about this character who meets this guy on a plane, if I remember correctly, and it's basically a satire all about anarchy, but a lot of people don't realize that it's satire. It's like making fun of hypermasculinity and basically showing like why being that hypermasculine is not good. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it was good. I gave it a four out of five stars. Helen Bottom Carter, love her. Um, the movie is weird as it was the first time. It is very fun once you know the secret to then watch again though. I definitely enjoyed my second time around watching it. Okay, then Matt and I watched The Abyss, which is a thriller sci-fi ish. This group of military people's submarine was unexpectedly brought down and like went missing. And so then this other group of non-marine people have a submarine that can go down into the deep, deep abyss. Um, and so they are contracted to go searching for the submarine and see what happened. Um, and in doing so, there is a sci-fi element. There's also this made up disease that happened that makes people go crazy. <laughs> and it was a thriller. It was good. I liked the, the sci-fi aspect of it that I don't want to go into in case you want to watch it. But this movie is made in like the 90s, so it's kind of old. And it was fun. I think I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. It was enjoyable. Okay, then we watched Dracula, which is the Netflix show. And they're long episodes. They're like an hour and a half episodes. And I think that there's three or four of them. And we stopped watching after three because it's not good. The show is like kind of based on the original Dracula book. But then they also intersperse some other vampire related people in it and it just wasn't good. The acting wasn't good. The story wasn't good. It wasn't good. I gave it a two out of five because it was entertaining enough to keep going from episode one. Then I watched the cheer documentary on Netflix which follows this cheer team from the middle of nowhere that have been winning first place at the Daytona Florida championship for like years running and so it's all about their season and preparing for the competition and then they go to the competition and blah 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 and it was really good I give it a five out of five stars cheerleading is insane is all I have to say it's crazy and then I also watched season nine of shameless which I gave a four out of five stars. This is the last season that will have Fiona in it. And it is the beginning of this. This season will lead up to season 10, which is where Philip becomes a dad. And I'm so excited for Lip to become a dad. I'm so excited. Um, this show, this show is like kind of a guilty pleasure for me. But I also think it's really 
interesting. I don't know. I really like this show. I don't know why I love it as much as I do, but it's great. I gave the season a four out of five stars. It's not perfect. The longer the show goes, the more I'm like, eh, it's fine. But I just really love so many of the characters, and I just love the, like, weird, crazy shit that happens in this show. So it was a fun time. I'm so excited for season 10. Those are all the shows that I've been watching recently. Uh, Matt and I uh, and David are all watching Outsider or The Outsider, which is an HBO show based on the Stephen King novel, but we haven't finished it yet, so I'm not going to review it yet. And Matt and I have also been watching Penny Dreadful. We're in season three, I think, now. So I'm waiting to review that as well. There is a new Penny Dreadful show that's coming out that I am also excited for. It's set in the 40s in LA instead of in like 1700s London. So that'll be interesting. We are definitely interested in watching that. And that is everything for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I make videos every Tuesday and Thursday on this channel. So I will see you guys very, very soon with a new one. Bye!